Just like any other industry, medical in industry has its own jargon. If you have come across terms that cause a lot of confusion and problems in the implementation of your quality management system, you are not alone. Hello and welcome. I'm Naveen Agarwal and I help medical companies build safe products through a quality management system that is not only compliant, but also agile and focused on the needs of patients and doctors. So call me or email me with your questions and let me know how I can help you. This video is one out of the series of videos I have created that talk about different terms that we commonly use in medical device quality management systems. In my experience, there's a lot of confusion and many times there are problems in implementation. We are focusing on the term harm in this video. If you have implemented ISO 14971 for risk management in your process, you are already familiar with three key terms, hazard, hazardous situation, and harm. Check out the other videos on my channel for hazard and hazardous situation. But keep in mind that these are interrelated terms. So not only do we need to understand what they mean individually, but also how they relate with each other. ISO 14971 defines the term harm as injury or damage to the health of people or damage to property or environment. But this is a very broad definition. Harm could be a simple minor inconvenience from a health point of view. For example, let's say a minor headache. Or it could be a life-threatening situation that may cause you to rush to the hospital, maybe be admitted into an ICU, or in extreme unfortunate situations, it may cause even death. So the harm has two dimensions to it, the type of harm and the severity of that harm. Let's illustrate this with a few examples in the next slide. Going from left to right in this slide, you can get a mild electric shock from a faulty circuit or it can even cause death. You can get a minor cold or a full-blown flu. Similarly, a chemical exposure may be a minor allergic reaction or a severe burn. There may be a minor complication as a result of surgery or the wrong body part may be operated upon due to mistakes in pre-surgery preparations. In a snowstorm, you may only slide off the road or be involved in a large-scale crash with many other cars. And finally, problems with a medical device can cause serious issues such as hospitalization in the ICU or even death. I have seen two major problems when it comes to harm in the risk management systems. The first is not using a standard terminology with the help of a medical professional. And as a result, a lot of commonly used terms are used which may cause a lot of confusion. The second problem is about assignment of severity levels. And I will go into both of these in a little bit of detail in the video. We know that medical products are introduced in the marketplace with only a limited amount of clinical experience. So at the time of launch, you may have a list of potential harms that you may have evaluated during the design process. And as more information comes from the market, during post-market surveillance, you learn more about new harms that may have been caused as a result of the use of that device. Typically, people use a list of terms in their complaint management system, but this list doesn't evolve over time. It also uses non-standard terminology. So it's not a surprise that many times you see the category other as the highest category of issues that are going on in the marketplace. And that is a very difficult thing to understand from a risk management point of view. What I recommend is use something called MEDRA. It's a medical dictionary for regulatory activities and it defines harms in strictly medical terms. I recommend getting help from a medical professional who can help you clearly interpret these medical terms and provide definitions that may be relevant for your particular product. Second problem, as I mentioned before, is assignment of severity levels. On my blog, I have written about this topic and in fact, there has been a recent FDA warning letter. The main reason why 
inconsistency in severity level assignment happens is because people have different interpretations of how a hazard may lead to harm. In my other video, I talked about linking the two through clear definition of sequence of events leading to a hazardous situation and harm. Now, it is quite understandable that certain sequence of events may not have a very high exposure for the patient and as a result, the harm may be of low severity. But it is a combination of the sequence of events and the harm that determines severity. This is best done through a master harms table. If you outline all these possible scenarios, working with a medical professional, identify the combinations of events that may lead to a lower severity harm, you'll have a very clear line item in your master table for one harm at a different severity level. Instead of having that harm listed somewhere with multiple severity levels that people have assigned based on their interpretations. If you do that, then people use different severity levels based on the interpretation at that time. And as a result, you have inconsistency in your risk management records. This is a big issue, something to be careful about, because as I mentioned before, there's already an FDA warning letter on this topic. It takes a little bit of time to build these foundational documents, such as a master harms table or a master hazards table, a table that links hazards to hazardous situations through foreseeable sequence of events. But once you build it, you can use these documents over and over again for different projects. So I strongly recommend it because it makes life much easier and also makes your process much more effective. In conclusion, there are two key points to remember. Harms have two dimensions, the type of harm and the severity of that harm. And the exposure to a hazardous situation must happen before the harm to occur. That's why understanding the relationship between hazards, hazardous situations and harms is so important. Thank you for your attention and interest. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Visit my website www.exceedqm.com to learn more about this topic. I have an article on my blog that provides more details and offers more guidance. You can also sign up for my monthly newsletter. It takes only 15 minutes to stay current with the latest in our industry and the world of regulatory compliance. And it's absolutely free.